Good afternoon everyone, thanks for joining me. My name is Damon Greenfield, I'm a communication professional at Highways England and today I'm going to talk about stakeholder engagement and how it plays an important role in delivering public relations. My role at Highways England involves communications and stakeholder engagement where I play an active role in ensuring anyone with an interest in roads and the communities we serve are informed about the impacts and benefits some of our work has on people. A great example of the importance of emotional and visual connection comes from Coca-Cola. For years, Coca-Cola's competitors have performed better on taste tests. Despite this, Coca-Cola has been able to sustain a market leadership position. As communicators, the importance of difference has been embedded in the way we think and the way we market, and Coca-Cola exemplifies how to separate far beyond the rational and functional attributes of a brand in, in, and into emotional territory. Coca-Cola has been winning for years because it's identified its emotional right space. Its approach to brand building has been to have a laser focus on one emotion, happiness, and to execute every communication activation and touch point with the intention of eliciting happiness amongst its consumers. Even as campaigns evolve, as they have with Coca-Cola, moving from open happiness to taste to feel and expression of the brand is still grounded in its core emotion, happiness. This is at the heart of how Coca-Cola creates a powerful emotional connection with its consumers. And as humans, we're extremely visual. We think largely in images, not words. Most communication is non-verbal. We rely more on non-verbal clues to evaluate the emotional state of the person speaking. Here are some statistics. 55% of communication comes through facial expressions. 38% of communication is through tone of voice. Yet only 7% of communication is through verbal exchange. The emotion that a brand evokes in someone, or more importantly, in a specific group of people, has had a big impact on a company's success or failure. Emotions drive decisions, prompt actions and change mindsets, leading to a strong and deep connection with a given brand that can extend beyond its rational attributes. These emotional connections are more psychological than logical, and usually are subconscious feelings. Organisations that develop distinct personas in people's minds project an image that people want to buy into. Someone may buy a product because it makes them feel smart, affluent or sophisticated. For example, I'd be stylish if I bought those shoes. Generally, people buy products that are consistent with their positive or aspirational image of themselves. Before I go into the important role stakeholder engagement plays in our public relations offering, I just want to set the scene a little and identify who our stakeholders are at Iowa's England. In the UK, there are over 66 million people. These people make up our immediate target audience. Our customers include families, workers, students, MPs, commuters, holidaymakers, communities in business, and even international visitors. The list goes on. Our stakeholders use our roads for far-reaching reasons beyond going from A to B. We use the strategic road network to go on holiday, transport food and drink, construction materials and even waste. We play a significant part in connecting not only people and communities, but countries and industry, which is why stakeholder engagement is so important. But how does stakeholder relations play its part in uh, engagement? What are the benefits? I'll briefly explain. Stakeholder engagement gives road users and communities an opportunity to influence our investment proposals by being part of the conversation and decision-making process. Whilst the engagement plays a part of the statutory process by which the public's impact on matters affecting them is sought, its main goals are improving the efficiency, transparency and public involvement across our maintenance and major projects we as a business are responsible for delivering. This involves publicises maintenance and road upgrades, options and designs that need to be consulted on, a two-way flow of information and opinion exchange, as well as participation involving individuals or groups with an interest in influencing our road investment proposals. I often hear people say, we need change now, just get on with it. Why engage with stakeholders when it only delays things? One of the great strengths of this country is that we have a strategic road network. At its best, it's for the people, by the people, of the people. Which is why it's so important that we engage with our communities, our stakeholders and road users in meaningful ways, involving them directly in the conversations and decisions we make about the future of our motorways. We achieve this by following a simple but effective set of rules that we are accountable for delivering. This involves the following, accountability. 
We are increasingly required to be open and transparent about what we do and why when it comes to spending public money. Values and purpose. We need to live and breathe our values and connect with our roots that demonstrate our commitment to public good. Trust. Trust is difficult to win, yet easily lost. Stakeholder engagement is a mindset that acknowledges that the public has a genuine stake in what we do, that knowledge and sensitivities must be listened to and acknowledged. Relevance. Engaging the public through open-ended dialogue, curiosity-driven conversations and collaborations which respects insights, experiences and expertise of the wider public, enrich our focus, clarity and relevance of our goals. Responsiveness. We can no longer offer our services on our own terms. The wider public are increasingly making their voices heard about the future of our roads. Public engagement helps us respond positively by building relationships that is animated by dialogue, partnership and co-production rather than simply by customer satisfaction. At Highways England, in terms of stakeholder engagement, we also aim to incorporate the following set of engagement principles. Engagement should have a purpose, be informative and not just a tick box ticking exercise. Engagement should not only form part of a process, it should also be continuous and not for a small proportion of time. Engagement should also be targeted and tailored to the needs of the stakeholder and should take the account of the stakeholder being, being ta targeted. Engagement should facilitate scrutiny and responses to engagement um, should be issued where appropriately in a timely fashion. Stakeholder engagement should be purposeful and undertaken during times that is convenient to all parties. So how do we go about delivering engagement that adheres to all these principles? At Highways England, we have a variety of communications channels and approaches that we maximise to ensure our stakeholders are at the forefront of our minds when it comes to delivering fit-for-purpose engagement exercises. This includes a programme of proactive engagement, explaining what we're doing, why we're doing it, and the benefits it will bring within the context of any work we're planning or undertaking. To achieve this, we create some or all of the following. Briefings, public information events, online and offline notifications, advertising, media and paid for, paid for media activity, including social media and radio, online engagement that includes virtual reality, web pages, consultation platforms, live Q&A sessions, YouTube, stakeholder working groups and workshops. We even have a stakeholder engagement vehicle that allows us to visit hard to reach audiences. Rather than people coming to us, we can go to them. Events including county shows and exhibitions. Before we communicate with our stakeholders, we first need to inspire them to participate in our engagement exercises. Easier said than done. However, I made a discovery recently when researching public consultation and stakeholder engagement at Highways England as part of a master's at Leeds Beckett University. And it changed my view on how I thought the world worked. And it even changed in way in which I operate. As it turns out, there's a pattern all great inspiring leaders and organisations in the world follow, whether it's Apple, Martin Luther King or the Wright Brothers. They're all, they all think, act and communicate in the same way. Because of the very nature of what we do, connecting people to roads we all use, Highways England is at the heart of communities and each year we make a significant investment in making sure our roads are safe and dependable. With responsibility comes significant challenge so how do we explain when others are able to inspire and achieve things beyond expectation? For example, why are Apple so innovative? Year after year, they are looking to push boundaries and their competitors to create and inspire their customers to buy something they never knew they needed, not wanted, but needed. Yet Apple are just another comp computer company. They're just like everyone else. They have the same access to the same talent, the same agencies, the same consultants, the same media. But then why is it that they seem to have something different? And why is it that the Wright brothers were able to figure out controlled powered man flight when there were other teams who were better qualified, better funded? Yet they didn't achieve powered man flight. The Wright brothers beat them to it. It's something else. It's the opposite to most people. It's probably the world's simplest idea. And it's something I learned listening to when uh, watching Simon Sinek. It's called the Golden Circle. Why? How? And what? This little idea explains why some organisations and leaders can inspire, inspire where others don't. I'll define the terms really quickly. Every single person 
Every single organization know what they do, 100%. Some know how they do it, similar to your, your unique selling point. But not every person or organization knows why they do what they do. Very few people or organizations know why they do what they do. And by why, I don't mean to make a profit. That's a result. It's always a result. By why, I mean, what's your purpose? What's your cause? What's your belief? Why do you get out of bed in the morning? Why should anybody care? And as a result, the way we think, act and communicate is from the inside out. It's obvious. We go from the clearest thing to the fuzziest thing. But inspired organisations and leaders, regardless of the size and industry, all think, act and communicate from the outside in. Let me give you an example. I'll use Apple because they are easy to understand and most people get it. If Apple were like everyone else, their messaging may sound like, we're great at computers, they're beautifully designed, simple to use and user friendly. Wanna buy one? That's how most people communicate. That's how we communicate interpersonally. We say what we do, how we are different or better and make some sort of behavior, a purchase, a vote, support for a planning proposal or something like that. It's a bit like saying, here's our new motorway. It gets you from A to B, support our planning application, but it's not inspiring. Now here is how Apple communicates. Everything we do, we believe in challenging the status quo. We believe in thinking differently. The way we challenge the status quo is by making our products beautifully designed, simple to use and user friendly. We just happen to make great computers. Want to buy one? Totally different, right? You may be more ready to buy. All I did was reverse the information. What it proves is that people don't buy what you do. People buy why you do it, which is why stakeholder engagement is so important. Our audiences need to buy into why we do what we do. But if you don't know why you do what you do, and people ask well, why you do what you do, then how will we ever get people to engage with us and support our major projects and want to be part of what it is that we do? The goal is not just to engage with people who, who need what we have. The goal is to engage with people who believe in what we believe. That is why we need to communicate and inspire our stakeholders to believe that if we can figure out and deliver the best solution to connect people and communities, we can change the course of our country. The pursuit of building a road is the result. But the reason behind why people and communities use our road is driven by a cause, by a purpose, by a belief. People who believe in Iowa England's work and vision will support us through thick and thin and will share our stories whilst being part of it, what it is that we do. People don't buy what you do, they buy why you do it. If we talk about what we believe, we will attract those who share our vision. It's equally important to attempt to convert those who don't yet believe, particularly through stakeholder engagement, using the four laws of change to convert. Law 1. Change is constant. There's never been a time when change has not happened. We often feel that in the past things were more constant, but this is just an illusion. Law two, change can be positive, negative or both. Whether we see it as a positive or negative, negative is often a matter of perspective. It's, is it a positive innovation or another pointless change? Is it a belief? Law three, if you create change, you will embrace it. If you change happens to you, there is a good chance you will resist it. And law four, anything used or experienced enough times will stop being a change and will start to become the norm. So you see, if we engage with our stakeholders and open dialogue with them early on, we can share our beliefs in hope that they will attempt to share our vision and explain it on our behalf. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. At Highways England, if there's someone who doesn't know what we do and asks why we do what we do, I always try to use something that incorporates a road user or a member of the community who uses our roads. Something along the lines of, we help Mrs Jones get home from work sooner rather than being stuck in traffic so that she can read her kids a bedtime story. Or, we get the Joneses on the road more often so they can visit their grandchildren more often. At Iways England, our purpose sits at the heart of everything we do. It drives what we do, how we do it and why we do it. We exist to connect the country. We are passionate about making a positive impact on people's lives, the economy and the country as a whole. We care about each and every journey. With our care, experience and expertise, we keep people moving today and moving better tomorrow.
and we face a challenging, exciting journey ahead. The scale of our infrastructure plans sets us aside from almost any other industry in the country, and our goal is to create an understanding about the work we undertake throughout our regions. Our challenge is to engage stakeholders, customers and consultees in order to break down some of the barriers that exist and to connect people to the road industry by using a mix of traditional and modern communication channels so we can reach a wider demographic of participation and ultimately earn the recognition and respect of our audiences. We live in a world where we are more connected than ever before and where we are exposed to an unprecedented amount of traditional online content. However, some organisations often focus their engagement mostly using traditional face-to-face -face methods and COVID-19 has proved this. Traditional engagement attracts an unrepresented proportion of the wider community which can impact on the implementation of infrastructure. It's critical that we have a more considered approach to community and stakeholder engagement on planning and infrastructure delivery. And I'll now highlight some of the considerations when it comes to improving your engagement exercises. Community engagement is often, it's often accused as being only undertaken as a statutory requirement to inform communities on proposals and developments. Current methods of community engagement, such as face-to-face, -face, workshops, community forums, public hearing and online forums, are only reach certain demographics of the population and in times like now, not at all, but and as a result, the opinions of stakeholders classified as hard to reach are not often reflected in the overall engagement process. Ask your community audiences how they want to be engaged with. Approach. It's been argued that many stakeholders are that legally required methods of community engagement in decision making rarely achieve genuine engagement outcomes, create dissatisfaction among citizens who feel they're not being heard and do not significantly improve the decisions and do not incorporate a broad spectrum of the community. It's been further argued that some traditional engagement practices suffer from a lack of integration between decision makers and the public have shown, and have shown that have inadequate representation of age groups and demographics. Don't just approach engagement as a box ticking exercise. Make sure you are open and transparent about what you are doing, why you want to engage and how you want to establish two way engagement. Engagement and technologies. In the last decade, information and communication technology, as we know it, has evolved from simply using a PC in the workplace or at home to becoming an integrated feature of daily life through new forms of digital and mobile technologies. New technologies are increasingly being designed for everyday use in urban environments, such as smartphones, tablet devices, digital signage and urban screens. In the new age of social interaction and communication, contemporary society has adopted the use the use of digital technologies within a variety of urban contexts. In particular, the use of situated digital technologies offers opportunities to engage people in localised conversations within a particular public space around engagement topics of local relevance. There will always be a need for traditional engagement, but combine it with more modern engagement methods as the mechanism of reaching wider demographics and you'll start to go beyond minimum expectation. I'll now reflect on some... Uh, offer some reflections on COVID-19. Stakeholder engagement has been in the spotlight recently and the current crisis has been the ultimate test as to how organisations do the right thing for their employees, customers and stakeholders. Words and actions during this time will be judged long after the pandemic ends. Yet, if organisations set up to the challenge, the result can be more rewarding communication experience than many have ever had, with value, valuable lessons learned for the future. Coronavirus has also brought opportunities for our communications and engagement. The COVID-19 pandemic has left, left us but with no choice but to engage much more than usual with internal and external audiences. And not only are we communicating more frequently, the communications focus during this crisis is at least as much on empathy and reassurance as it has on facts and numbers. The approach of not only highlighting the challenges, the must-dos and the pitfalls when it comes to COVID-19 communications, Instead, organisations also need to look at the opportunities for learning and growing, the crisis, growing with this crisis that presents us. I'm just going to finish with some reflections on my own time at working at Highways England during lockdown. Reputation matters. I read in an article recently, um, it highlighted the importance of brands taking the time to reinvent their digital marketing or communication strategies during the COVID-19 crisis. It's just as applicable to each of us. 
Now is a great time to evaluate your own personal brand. Who do you want to be? What goals will you set for your remainder of the year? How will you reach them? There is no time like the present to enhance your reputation. Act on the dream you've had for years. Establish a habit of excellence, promptness or any other desirable quality. Now's the time because when we come out of this crisis, and we will, you and your organisation's reputation may matter more than ever. At Highways England, we receive daily updates about mental health and well-being, messages of support from senior leaders about new ways of working. Even our children received a letter from directors explaining how Highways England was supporting their parents during these uncertain times. Reputation isn't only about external audiences. It's internal too, and it's little touches like this that enhance your reputation overall. Because if you get it right internal, you have a recipe to get it right externally, and your employees become your biggest ambassador. Listen more than you speak. My grandmother always said this to me, and it's more apparent now than ever that I learned the value of this lesson. When people call, just listen. I've occasionally had my doubts that all people wanted to do was for me to listen. But during the COVID-19 crisis, this is particularly important for those in communications. Going through the equivalent of running through life to staying at home for months on end has not been the easiest adjustment for any of us. For some, it's been downright, it's been downright devastating, resulting in issues related to unemployment, food insecurity, mental health. Now is a great time to show empathy and just listen. People want, their, uh, they want to be listened to their realities and their fears. Place yourself in their shoes. Then, when you're done listening, show your compassion through kind, reassuring words and by sharing challenges you faced during the crisis and how you overcame them. First, though, you must listen. As the saying goes, people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Listen and learn. The front line is essential. As we've all come to appreciate, it's not necessarily the best paid workers who turn out to be key. It's people who work in factories, supermarkets, who care for the vulnerable or drive delivery vans. Colleagues who are working from home and also keep the supply chain going find different ways to connect with stakeholders or onboard new com colleagues remotely. In short, everyone will have a relevant experience of what it means to make things work in this new reality. As organisations start to look beyond the crisis and evaluate all of this and what it means for future ways of organising their businesses, it would be foolish not to pay attention to the lessons learned from across each and every organisation. A reinforced, we are in this together mentality in combination with the normalisation of digital communication tools, could also have a lasting positive effect on a company's dialogue culture. Engagement can facilitate this process by creating feedback loops and providing dialogue platforms. Digital tools present us huge opportunities to connect different stakeholders. Even though they may bring their own challenges, for instance, virtual events can lack the experience of witnessing an audience's immediate reaction. These can be more compensated um, for if communicators tap into the potential of digi digital moderation and polling tools. Commitment is key. Early in my communications career, I had the opportunity to attend a workshop in which the presenter shared some advice that has always stuck with me. The presenter made a statement that will forever resonate with me. Winners make commitments. Others just make excuses. I believe this statement holds true for each of us today. We're in the midst of an unprecedented global pandemic. The opportunity exists for each of us to make excuses for why we can or shouldn't or won't do what we were compelled to do. Ask yourself, what excuses could you, what excuses could you remove during the crisis? More importantly, what commitments could you make? Commit to creating the life you desire. When the crisis is over, commit to sustaining that lifestyle. Even in the midst of a crisis, we must continue building ethical and positive reputation. Learn to listen and show empathy and commit to sustaining rewarding lives. Recognise communication as a core leadership task, not only in the times of a crisis. During a crisis of these dimensions, engagement must always be at the forefront of all communications, providing guidance and reinsurance for internal and external stakeholders. And many organisations have had no choice but to step out of their comfort zone, communicating relentlessly and being much more exposed than they would normally want to be. The one thing organisations are often afraid to admit is, I don't know. With COVID-19, no one knows. There's no script for what we're going through. In a pandemic, no one has the patience for jargon. This highly complex, fast-paced and uncertain situation requires transparent, concise and empathetic communications. This is good news. Also beyond the coronavirus crisis, 
Organisations will find their own experience improves immensely when they communicate with relevance and meaning. The resonance and encouragement, encouragement many organisations receive from their audiences right now may serve as more of a general wake-up call to the power of communications. Organisations don't have to do it all by themselves. It's the task of a com company's communicators to strengthen and enable leaders in their role. Communications and engagement can provide the tools they need and advise them on tone, content and the right channels to connect with their audiences. Harness the power of your corporate culture. There's value in values. In the absence of any certainty around what the immediate future holds, it can be helpful to emphasise a common purpose or values that provide direction. At Highways England, we go beyond rhetoric. Organisations will do well to follow Highways England's example and be prepared to walk the talk if they don't want to risk sustained damage to their reputation. But it's not only the executives of an organisation whose behaviours during the pandemic have been scrutinised. It's also the people who are the everyday voice and face of a company, manning call centres, dealing with suppliers or serving with customers. COVID-19 highlights the importance of building and creating a strong corporate culture. When crisis strikes, no one will go through the corporate guidelines and look up how to act. People will do it, do what they feel is right. This situation presents an opportunity to review how the current culture serves the company in times of crisis and beyond. If the values that are no doubt written down somewhere actually resonate with people, or if it's time to define a purpose that creates meaning beyond the shareholder's perspective, now is the time for organisations to identify cultural strengths that they want to build on and weaknesses that need to be addressed at a later date. By linking exemplary behaviours to the company's purpose, vision or values, they can reinforce desired traits of their corporate culture. Culture, however, is organic and often more alive and well at the front line than in HQ. Corporate comms can provide platforms to celebrate best practices from across the organisation and empower people to share their stories on how they bring company values to life. Trust your colleagues. You've got each other's back. At the moment, most organisations see their people much less than they used to. Organisations need to get comfortable with a more hands-off approach. And this doesn't mean that engagement should cease. It's important to keep speaking to with people individually and as a team to provide a sense of structure and cohesion. This means organisations will have to adapt their engagement behaviours in normal times in formal discussions and impromptu meetings and ensure that colleagues keep up to speed on developments outside their immediate remit. With team members working in isolation, organisations need to create more transparency on structures and processes. Not being able to literally look over everyone's shoulder, they must enable more autonomy and may have to delegate responsibility. Ultimately, they need to trust their people to do the right thing even when no one's watching. Engagement in tandem with HR can support managers by providing training and showcasing tools that facilitate remote teamwork. They can also enable dialogue or best practices and lessons learned within the company's leadership community. Of course, as with many other things, COVID-19 is accelerating a development that was already underway before the crisis. Many organisations want to become more agile, or at least in part, to deal with the challenges and opportunities of the digital transformation. This means working more flexibly, creating space for creativity and empowering people to make decisions outside of stifling business structures. Even if the current workplace revolution has been involuntary, there's been an opportunity for many organisations to reevaluate how these new leadership and collaboration practices might enable them to drive a strategic agenda in the long term. And some final thoughts. People don't buy what you do. They buy why you do it. And at Highways England, there's no better example of the following short video that describes the purpose of Highways England. At Highways England, we believe in a connected country. We believe that connecting people builds communities. That connecting families with places creates memories. That connecting workers with jobs creates opportunities. And that connecting businesses helps our nation thrive. Our network makes these connections happen. Four million a day. And we make them happen safely, reliably, 
Because we're the ones who never sleep. The ones who strive to improve our major roads and motorways. The ones who quietly design and plan, build and run. With pride, care and experience. Because our network is vital to the running of the country. We engineer the future to keep people moving today and moving better tomorrow. We've introduced Cockneys to Cornwall and Carlisle to the continent. 4,300 miles driven smarter and smoother. City to countryside, mountain to coast, wherever the people are. What connects them is England. What connects England is us. Thank you for joining me today. I hope you stay safe and well. Thank you.